Good afternoon, Floss Tube. It is Sunday, April 19th, and we started the day with a thunderstorm here in Texas, but now the sun is out. Happy to see the sun, but the humidity, oh goodness. But I have to say how grateful I am that until yesterday, we had beautiful, sunny weather, and it was in the 60s, so breezy, beautiful. It was all I could do to stay indoors to do my work. But I have to say that I got out at the end of every work day and did my long walk, my sanity saving walk, and it was just glorious. The trees are all starting with beautiful green leaves. Some people's flowers are blooming. So those walks were therapeutic, no question about that. I hope this finds you well. I know you are shocked that I am back after one week, but I promised you I would come show my happy birthday start, which came at the end of the week and got worked on yesterday and just a little bit today. Before we talk about that, let me let you know that I have two whips that I will show progress on and a book review for the end and a little bit of rambling, I'm afraid, but it's so good to be back with you and I hope your stitching is bringing you calm and lots of fun. So as you know, this is on my Please Finish Quickly list, and you've seen this almost every video for a long time. Maura Blackburn Country Cottage. It is a Boppy Threads kit. And the more I do, thinking I'm almost finished, the more there is to do. But here's where we are. See if I can get the whole thing in the picture. So let me talk about what I did. I moved the gentleman's flowers. I ripped them all out, put them in the proper spot. I have filled in a lot of the orange flowers, some of the lavender flowers here, and I have been working on this border. Oops, sorry about that some mindless stitching all around. Now, cross your fingers with me that I do not run out of this green that I'm doing the border with. That is the one thing about a kit that makes me nervous. But what's going to take me forever, I'm afraid, is finishing the border. Now, if you'll see, I got my 2020 put in. So hopefully in the next couple of days, I can get my first initial and my last name, which will go right here. There will be another border line that goes on the other side of here. And is that everything? Yes, just filling in the border. So as we've talked about before, what you see on the bottom is what will go all the way around. So there are green leaves, there are lavender flowers, and some more orange flowers. But it's going to stay ready to work on because it's got to be finished. And as soon as we're out of shelter at home and this is finished, we are headed to the framers. I've enjoyed it so much. The other one I would love to finish is a stitch along with my friend Donna. And it is called Summer Quakers by Rosewood Manor, Karen Klupa. And an another example of, oh, I'm almost finished. And then, oh goodness, look what I still have left to do. But let me show you what has been happening since last weekend. So, sorry about this wiggly way of showing. Let me see. Okay, so the motif here that you're seeing with that cute little bird is what I've been working on. And I can't really see what you're seeing, but you know how huge this motif is. I'll show you the picture again. So I've been working there where the bird is and then some of these diamonds. The part on the bottom here is complete. So this is as it should be, as is this. Now, what I'm missing in this part, and through a lot of this up here, is the green spring leaf um, 
floss Valdani that I had run out of. So you know that I am waiting on that. But of course, as we talked about last time, I still have the alphabet at the bottom and then some smaller motifs to fill in. But there is Summer Quakers. Still loving it. It just feels that that motif goes on forever. Huh. Let me hold the whole thing up one time for you. Please excuse me, I keep dropping things. Okay, let's see. It's a big piece. I think I want this one framed for our dining or living area because the colors are perfect for that. We'll see what we decide. But you can see where the motifs are missing, the small ones, and then the rest of that very big one at the bottom. Happy colors, beautiful variegated floss, beautiful linen. I've never had the hand dyed or hand whatever linen before. Such fun. So we're gonna finish that, we hope. Now, you know that I ordered for myself a special it was actually a Nashville market release. It was the only one that I just felt I had to have. And it came, I had ordered it from the Silver Needle in Tulsa, Oklahoma, because I had heard that they were still filling orders for, um, for you know, stitch people who couldn't come to the store. And I had tried another shop in Arkansas a sh the Shepherd's Needle, I believe, and I know that they are filling orders, but I did not reach them on the phone, and I was being impatient. But isn't that beautiful wrapping in which my package came, and three adorable little jelly bellies, can you see those, which I have not eaten because I wanted to show you, and then my gorgeous linen. I had pulled as many of the DMC threads as I could before I ordered, and then I ordered what was left. So I am doing the DMC conversion instead of, instead of Crescent Color Works and Weeks Dye Works. Yes, so this is my beautiful Plum Street Samplers, A Shepherd's Song. And I know many of you are familiar with this. The thing that caught my eye was the verse based on the 23rd Psalm, a total life favorite. And then those adorable sheep. May goodness and mercy follow thee. What could be more appropriate for this time? So we've had a learning curve with this and you will appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I ordered the linen 36 count because I wanted to give that a try. And they did not surge this for me. So the night before I did a little zigzag around the edges. This is actually called Antique Ivory. It doesn't really have a brand. But here is my progress and I'll talk about the learning curve. So I was not sure whether to use one strand or two on 36 count. And I was looking it up on different people's blogs and it looked as if one strand was quite appropriate. But when I started this black border, it looked skimpy to me. And then I started the leaves and still they felt skimpy. So I was messaging needle women friends on Instagram sent a picture to my daughter and my friend in Virginia, also asked my daughter who lives here. Anyway, apparently, this is the way to go because you don't have to worry about threads twisting. If you're using fancy floss or silk, you only use one strand. So everyone was saying, you'll get used to it. Go with the one strand. And now that I've done this much, I am just loving the way it looks, it's very delicate. Now, as I said, mine are all DMC, and I am having to use my magnifier on my Ot light to be sure that I'm putting 
the stitches in the right holes, but that has made it more than big enough. So I really think I could go with 40 count if I wanted to, which is fun to think about. So here we are, my happy birthday to me start. I could not be happier with it now that I figured out what to do. And you remember that I had bought this Kate Spade storage box back when Samantha Crafting Between Stitches had talked about storing her projects in these boxes. And so I'm all set up with my floss in the floss bags. When I'm not working on this and it's off the hoop, I will put it in the box. I will put the pattern in the box and the whole thing can go safely on the shelf because this was a fancier linen than I want to buy. So here we are, and I didn't change the label because I will know what is in this box. So excited. I spent uh, as much time as I could this weekend on this, and I want to get back to it this afternoon. So I do have a quick book review, and then I thought we would chat just a little bit about the situation that we're in. I listened to this as an audiobook. A friend of mine from work had recommended it. It's called The Giver of Stars. And do you know that one of our floss tube friends, Nicole Buckeye Stitcher, had read this just about the time that I was reading it and we were able to communicate about it. The reason I'm showing it to you is twofold. One, the characters and the story are wonderful. But two, it talks throughout the whole book about the resilience and the determination of these women in the story who were horseback librarians during the time of the WPA in West Virginia, which is, of course, mountainous coal mining country. I have never heard some of the deprivation, abuse, things that went on in those mountains at that time. And yet, at the same time, neighbor helping neighbor, love between families and friends, just a real life story. And I think it spoke to me right now because we need to learn resilience and determination during this pandemic that we're all living through. And we need to realize that this is not the first time people have had to draw from within the strength to go one day at a time and manage what is happening in their lives. Now, I will say that it is not as clean as I prefer, but it isn't terrible language and really no violence. So that, that I'm glad to say, and it's beautifully written. Jojo Moyes is the author. I highly recommend the, the audiobook, but I know it would be a super read, a fast read as well. So if you need a little encouragement and a little motivation to face each day with that determination and patience as we go through this rough time, I think it will help you. And of course it appealed to me because the women were distributing books to all those people in the mountains who had no other contact and they were delivering those books on horseback. Every morning they would go into the library that had been particularly set apart for this project, load their saddlebags, and spend the whole day in the saddle taking books up and down that mountain in any weather, any temperature. And I think the sweetest part of the whole story is the friendship that was forged between the women who were the horseback librarians and their care and concern for someone going through a really tough time and just for each other. So, highly recommend. Now, before I close out for today, I just want you to know that your sweet, encouraging comments have been smiles on my days these last few weeks. And I think we are 
most fortunate because we have a hobby that flourishes when we are at home and that does indeed bring us peace and calm and sometimes makes our anxiety seem much less worrisome. So let's keep this up. Let's encourage each other. Let's keep stitching. And the most valuable lesson, I think, is to care for those we know and love and go out of our way to meet a need or to reach out to encourage. So good to see you today. I'm thrilled with my new project, one strand on 36 count over two. Learning curve for me, but a lot of fun. And I hope to be back with either some finishes or progress on all my projects. People, no matter how organized I am, I forget something important. Do you know that I have another fully finished object right here by my knee ready to show you? And I was about to sign off. Forgive me. You know that we had picked up our framing right before the shelter in place order came out. And it was my husband's great idea to show one finished project at a time, not show them both on one video. And I thought that was a great idea because they each need their own focus and are such different pieces. So before I sign out, I will show you the fully finished object. This is one that I had stitched many, many years ago. I did not date it. Let's see if we can get it in here without a glare. Here we go. Little House Needleworks, the bookshelf. And you remember me showing you this probably at one of my first videos. So it is now hanging proudly in our great room. We were able to match the green and pick a frame that coordinated with other frames in our living space. This is a more primitive or country, I guess, pattern, but we thought it could be dressed up a little bit and still look nice. And if you remember, we did change the book. I believe it had been Wuthering Heights. We changed it to Jane Eyre because one of my daughters loves that book. It's her favorite book of all time. And then, of course, we love Jane Austen. The Secret Garden is one of my very favorites, as is Little Women. And you remember me telling you that I have four daughters. I don't know that I could match them to the four little women. Sometimes I think I could, but not really. But still, the four little women. So, such a fun piece, and I'm smiling every time I walk by it when I'm at home doing my chores. And of course, the cute little sheep here in the corner, still loving sheep, and the beautiful books, which we all love. And then the flower urn and bouquet at the very top with the books. We have these colors all in our living space, so it couldn't have worked out better. So there we are, a fully finished object that almost got forgotten. Have a wonderful week. Stay well, stay safe. I will be back as soon as I have anything to show you and let me know if you have any great ideas or encouraging words or questions. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button. If you're a long time subscriber follower, I am so grateful for you. Take care. See you soon.